Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our service of Holy Communion. On this, the Sunday where we celebrate music, so we are in for a treat partway through the service. However, to begin with, let's sing um, the song on the sheet, Sing to God New Songs of Worship. It's got number 600 on it, but it should be on the sheet. In the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. And also with you. So we kneel or sit for our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We use the second prayer of confession. God of mercy, we confess with our whole heart our neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments 
our wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts we have done to others and the good we have left unknown. O oh God, forgive us, for we have sinned against you and raise us to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. for this the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear a reading from 1 Peter, chapter 4. The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the suffering of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal, or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, 
What will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. This is the word of the Lord. I praise God. <coughs> Our gradual hymn this morning is number 605, and as it is Music Sunday, you're going to sing the last two, ver two lines of each verse twice. Actually, it's the direction in the hymn, but never mind. <laughs>
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud. Honour your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor, (coughs) and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell away. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who can then be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the first letter of Peter, trying to glean from this scripture lessons from which we can benefit today in the 21st century. The author encouraged followers of Jesus to be easily identifiable by their behaviour towards each other and the way in which they treated strangers. Finally, all of you be of one mind, sympathetic, lovers of your fellow believers, compassionate and modest in your opinion of yourselves. Don't pay back evil for evil or insult for insult. Instead, give blessing in return. You were called to do this so you might inherit a blessing. In short, Christian identity was and is defined by mutuality and kinship across cultural, social and geographical differences. I don't know about you, but I've often heard it said that anyone who works hard and makes good choices can be happy and successful. Whilst that's true, it does not mean that doing good will necessarily make us healthy, wealthy, or indeed popular. The author of 1 Peter recognises this. It does not mean that we will not face challenges in life. Indeed, the early Christians were encouraged to recognise that if they endured bad times, as we all do at some point, they should rejoice as they had shared in the suffering of Jesus. I venture to suggest 
that this would have been a challenge for many people then, not to mention nowadays for present-day Christians. The reading that we've just heard from chapter 4 is not about the problem of suffering in general. Neither is it a reflection on why good people struggle with physical or mental illness, or die in car accidents, or have their lives overturned by natural disasters. But it is a pastoral word of hope and reassurance for people who are facing abuse, social rejection, and public humiliation, and this is the key bit, because they follow Jesus. It is the following of Jesus that is such a challenge for so many people in the world. God's work in and through Jesus is at the center of 1 Peter's message. Jesus is the one through whose blood we have been ransomed and through whose resurrection God has given us new birth. He is the living stone rejected by the builders but chosen by God. The cornerstone on which God's house is built. And he is the suffering Christ in whose footsteps we are called to follow. If even Christ suffered, it should come as no surprise that his followers may suffer as well. Put another way, when or if we are rejected by others in society for obeying God, we are partners in Christ's experience. We enter the fellowship of his suffering. We know that God raised Jesus from the dead and exalted him to a place of honour and we rejoice in anticipation knowing that ultimately Christ's glory will be revealed to the whole world. So when the world mocks us for following where Jesus leads, we can be filled with joy. Bit of a paradox that really, isn't it? The spirit of glory, the very spirit of God rests on us. Like Jesus, we have been anointed with the spirit. We are God's house the earthly dwelling place of God. What a privilege. We are called to be confident in God, but not complacent. As Christians, we are not exempt from God's judgment. On the contrary, 1 Peter says, judgment begins with God's household. God's dwelling must be clean and holy. Painful though it may be, the refining fire purifies God's people. 1 Peter asks, but does not answer this question. If even those who obey God find the process difficult, what will become of those who reject the gospel? That, I think, is a very sobering thought. So how should we live when we find ourselves passing through the refiner's fire? The author of 1 Peter calls us to trust, to trust in our creator, the judge who is trustworthy and just. But here's the thing, trusting God does not mean that we should wait passively for the world to change. Like the one in whose footsteps we follow, we are called to action. We are called to do good in Christ's name, to the honour and the glory of God. Like the wealthy young man in the reading from Mark's Gospel we heard just a few minutes ago. He was not asked simply to give away his wealth, but to give it to the poor. Not the church either, mind you, but to the poor. 
From this, we can deduce that implied in this direction from Jesus was the importance of sharing in the hardships and the needs of one's fellow human beings. And this is a requirement of life when we seek to enter the kingdom of God. Let us be confident then in service and in the face of persecution or hardships because of our calling. Let's follow this guidance. Finally, all of you be of one mind, sympathetic, lovers of your fellow believers, compassionate and modest in your opinion of yourselves. Don't pay back evil for evil or insult for insult. Instead, give blessing in return. You were called to do this so that you might inherit a blessing. Amen. So we stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Christ. <coughs> We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we now listen to an anthem sung by the choir, Christ Be With Me, based on the hymn called St. Patrick's Breastplate. Oh 
God of love, we give you thanks for the boundless mercies of our daily life. Make us more grateful for your many gifts, for the blessings of health, for the comforts of home and family life, for the joys of friendship, for the beauty of the world around us. Teach us this day to count our blessings and to receive them as from our Father's hand. Fill our hearts with gratitude and our lips with praise for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let us remember in our prayers the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. God, our refuge and strength, as we remember those who faced danger and death in Normandy 80 years ago, grant us courage to pursue what is right, the will to work with others, and the strength to overcome tyranny and oppression. Help those who survived and are now towards the end of their lives, as well as the many who still grieve the loss of a loved one, many of whom were so very young and cut off in the prime of life. We ask this in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And as you must realize by now, it is Music Sunday today. When we remember those in churches up and down the land who provide music for our services, the bell ringers that summon us to worship, the perception and interpretation of composers of music for liturgical use, and the skill of the choirs and musicians who perform the hymns and provide music. Creator God, composer of life's unending melodies, rich harmonies and compelling rhythms, inspire our worship and open up a, village, a vision of your glory. Help us by using music in our worship to enhance our joy of being here in your presence and of lifting our souls through singing to help your spirit enter our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. A prayer for the victims of war, oppression and disaster. O oh God, you bring hope out of emptiness, energy out of fear, new life out of grief and loss. Comfort all who have lost their homes and livelihoods through persecution, war, exile or deliberate destruction. Give them security a place to live and neighbours they can trust to be with, and with them a new sign of peace to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our leaders preparing for the general election. Sovereign God, hear our prayers for all those to whom you have entrusted positions of leadership and responsibility. Grant them wisdom in their decisions, courage to hold fast to what is right, integrity in their dealings, and a genuine commitment to the good of all those that they serve. Guide them to know and do your will for your kingdom's sake. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us a vision, Lord, to see what we can achieve, to reach beyond ourselves, to share our lives with others, to stretch our capabilities, to increase our sense of purpose, to be aware of where we can help, to be sensitive to your presence and give heed to your constant call. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our priest, Tim, and the clergy that support him here and in the benefice. Let us remember also the lay members 
who assist in the operation, outreach, and maintenance of the churches in so many aspects, utilizing their many and varied abilities to ensure the continuance of your presence here and in the churches in other villages. Lord, in your mercy. Let us hold a few moments of silence as we remember those who are ill in body, mind, spirit, or suffering disability that makes life hard, as well as those known only to you, O Lord. Help us to sense their needs and assist in bringing your healing touch and renewing grace. Lord, in your mercy. Our prayer. We remember those who have died recently or whose anniversary of death is about this time. Comfort those who mourn and help us to give them help and companionship as they adjust to their new situation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Seems to be a bumper notice sheet this week, but can I draw your attention to two particular what well, three actually, and what I'm slightly biased with one of them. Um, firstly, after the uh, all-age service today, there will be the first barbecue of the season at the rectory garden, is that correct? Yes, so please do come along to that. Secondly, what fantastic fundraising has gone on for Christian Aid. It really is amazing. And Judith needs a medal, frankly. <laughs> it's not 300 kilometres steps that she's done, it's 300,000 steps just in case you were wondering, because I misread that to begin with, I have to admit. And then, but that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Well done, Judith. And then also, <clears throat> in the midway pages, there's a garden party at Costock on the 22nd of June. I'm not here next week, so that's why I'm promoting it now. Please do come along if you can for at least part of that. It would be really lovely to see you. I think that's it for the main notices. Um, we now continue our service with the peace. Please stand. <clears throat> Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's offer one another a sign of that peace. Our offer tree hymn this morning is number 232, 232.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God we turn to the First Communion Prayer on page 14. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. <laughs> Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
bear with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Pray together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We stand for our final hymn this morning, My Life Flows On in Endless Song, number 733. <clears throat>
Tuesday for coffee, tea after this service, but when you then go, please go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.